All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And tonight we're going to be trying out something a little different here in the shack. Uh, as many of you know, over the past couple of years since I started the channel, I've tried out lots of different diode lasers. I've tried out a couple of different CO2 lasers. And I've tried out a few fibers, uh, the 1064 nanometer range machines. But so far, this is the very first Mopo laser that I've had in the shack. And Monport reached out to me, wanted to know if I wanted to try out their 30 watt Mopa. And since I had never had a Mopa in the shop, I thought, why not? I'll bring it in, we'll try it out. Of course, there was a little bit of a learning curve. And I'll share that with you as well as my experience with the machine in just a minute when we get back. So stick around, we'll be right back. All right guys, so some of you may be asking, what exactly is a MOPA? And that was something that I wasn't really clear on when I first got into lasers. So guys, bear with me real briefly. We're gonna kind of go through it. Okay, as you know, here at the channel, I have tried out a lot of diode lasers. I've tried out a couple of CO2s and several uh, IR or fiber lasers. And the biggest thing that differentiates the, the, the machines is the, the wavelength of the beam. All right, this machine operates at 1064 nanometers, whereas most of your blue diodes operate around 450 to 455. It varies. But for the most part, the blue, di the, the blue diodes will interact with most uh, materials such as wood, cork, any kind of organic material. But when it comes to plastics, metals, uh, things like that, they don't do so well. And sometimes they don't do much of anything. And so by changing the frequency of the light, it also changes the materials that you're able to use as a medium for your engraving. For instance, whereas with a diode machine, you can do black anodized cards and stuff, and basically you just remove the anodization. With a fiber machine and the appropriate settings, you can actually change the color of the anodization, or you can remove it altogether if that's what you choose to do. So it adds a little more variety to your materials. That's the big reason why somebody might want one, but let's get into what makes the machines different. As far as the operation standpoint, what makes them different is with the blue lasers and the CO2 lasers, for the most part, the hobby lasers, there are some, some differences with some of the other ones as far as frequency changing and stuff. But for most of your, your hobby style lasers, uh, you're gonna have two variables with you know, most of your CO2 and your blue diodes, which is gonna be speed and power. Now, you could kinda of count uh, focus because focus can affect the outcome, whether it be a little clearer image or you know, a darker burn. So you know, I like to count focus as one of those variables that you can adjust. Not only do you have speed, but you have speed, power, and focus. So with fiber lasers, with a regular fiber laser, like a Rakus uh, style laser, you would have speed, power, and you would also have a thing called frequency as well as focus. So that gives you the ability when you get into the fiber lasers to interact with metals and, and materials like that. Now you still can't do clear materials. So then you get into the MOPAs. The MOPAs are probably the, have the most variation of any of the lasers that I've dealt with so far. Because now you have speed, you have power, uh, you have frequency, you have pulse rate, and you have focus. So you have a total of five variables that can be adjusted in increments, you know, give or take here and there to get different outcomes. And that is the one thing that I will say where a MOPA shines above other machines, other lasers. MOPAs give you the ability, because of all of those variables, that you can tune the effect that it has on the material by regulating how much heat's in the surface of the material and all of those things. And in doing so, you have a lot better chance of getting colors in your engrave. And so that's one of the big things that MOPAs are known for is the ability to not only engrave and cut a little deeper than your typical fiber lasers, but it's a lot, I wouldn't say easier, <laughs> it's a lot more obtainable 
to be able to get colors with a MOPA. Now, keep in mind, the material, there's a lot of variables, and it's gonna require a lot of testing to, to reasonably predict color every single time. It's gonna require some testing. There's a lot of work goes into it, guys. And I have been testing, 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 and I have come to the conclusion that if I wanna do it because it's cool, I'll do it. But as far as doing it on any major level, uh, for a customer for a job it's gonna have to be a lot of pieces to make all the R&D that goes into trying to get those colors worthwhile so if you're trying to do a one or two you know off uh, getting certain colors unless you do a lot of that material guys it's gonna require you to do a lot of testing but it's a lot faster uh, aluminum is one of those materials that I will say I think I think I could see me using it with aluminum more so than trying to get colors on stainless. Now, marking stainless, putting numbers on stainless, quick, easy. The settings are pretty forgiving on that. Uh, but doing stuff with aluminum, you can actually get some pretty cool colors on blocks of aluminum and so forth. And it, so if, if you're wanting to, you know, put serial numbers and stuff like that on aluminum, this is a scrap piece of aluminum from a CNC job. Uh, and I did it with a little practicing with it. Uh, and this is a piece that I just kind of used to, to see what colors I could make with aluminum. And all of this is done, like I said, by adjusting those variables in the settings in Lightburn. Uh, the machine, by the way, I didn't mention this, the machine is a 30 watt and it operates in Lightburn. The one thing that I will say, and uh, a couple of buddies that have YouTube channels, I watch some of their videos and some of their content, uh, th they mentioned this and I tested it with this machine and I was able to get better results by doing a little bit of testing and a little bit of tuning uh, than what I got originally in the beginning. Uh, a lot of it had to do with the, the fact that I was trying to understand all of those settings, but I did go in and there's lots of videos out here that explain this from guys that know a lot more about these things than I do. So we're not gonna go real in depth with it, but there's, there's such things as a TC test that you'll need to do. And there's a couple of tests that you do. Basically, it's the timing controls for the laser that controls when the laser fires, when it cuts off. You know, is, there's a lot of timing involved in laser firing, laser moving, laser cutting off. There, there's, there's timing settings in there. You're able to go in and light burn and change those settings and adjust those settings. Sometimes the machine may be set perfectly and you may not want to make any adjustments. Others, you may be able to find uh, a room for improvement and adjust it. Just to be cautious with this machine, before I got to doing a whole lot of testing, I went ahead and ran some tests, researched it, tried to learn how to set this stuff, went in and ran those tests with mine, adjusted it, and I'm getting really good results. So far, it seems, it seems that I have found the settings that work best for this machine, and it's doing a really good job. I haven't noticed any, any issues with any of the engraving that I've been doing. Like I said, with the fiber, uh, especially with the MOPA, this is some of the options that you have. Uh, as you can see, with anodized cards, I have the option of making the, the coating turn white, removing it completely there in the middle, or making it kind of turn brown or shaded a different color. And all of that is done by changing the frequency, the power, the speed, or the pulse rate, or the focus in some cases. So those are the things that you'll have to learn. If you're coming into the fiber world from the diode world, it's gonna be a learning curve, guys. That's one reason why it's taken me a little while to try to do all the testing and get a good feel of this thing uh, before I did the video was because I wanted to be able to understand what the machine was doing and how well it fell as far as the other machines that are out there. I've watched a lot of videos from other guys. Like I said, uh, James Dean, uh, I've watched several of the, the videos from over at Light Source Engraving. Uh, he does a lot with fibers. And so I've watched some of his videos as well as countless others that I don't remember who they were. But trying to educate myself to the point to where I could test the machine, know what I was doing, and get some decent results. So I'm gonna move you over here and uh, kind of show you the way I've got it set up and we're gonna go over a few more material testing that I did. All right guys, so I don't wanna to go too in depth on the machine. Like I said, we're not gonna get off into the technical things, the technical specifications. If you wanna see more of the tech specs and all the geek stuff, I'll drop a link down below. You can click on that and go over there and look at it, read the book. That way I'm not misquoting anything. I'm not really into all the nerd statistics per se, 
Uh, but I do like to let you guys know what the machine is capable of, how it works, how it functions. And so we're gonna be doing a project with it later. Uh, but the one thing I would like to point out guys is the thing with fibers are they're for a very specific uh, purpose, okay? Batching things out, small items, because naturally, I mean, the work area on this thing, you're not gonna be doing anything large. Uh, this is gonna be made for small stuff. Uh, you can do uh, anything metallic, uh, whether it be, you know, decorative things, plastics, you can do a lot with plastics. I actually use it to mark uh, a lot of the power bricks and stuff like that for machines. Uh, if you have tools and you wanna make sure nobody like takes your tools, you can like put your, your self-identifying numbers or your name on your tools and things like that. It does open up a, another doorway of materials that you can mark, you can interact with, uh, slate, a lot of the, a, a lot of metals, pretty much any metal you can think of, brass, copper, gold. I have done gold with a fiber laser. Uh, it was a very expensive piece of gold and I was very nervous, but I did it and it worked. So there's a lot of things that you can do with the machines. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna go in and try to do another project, do a project with this machine. But for today, I just wanna kinda keep it short as I could, just show you the machine, what it's about. The, there's a few other videos I've seen out there of the machine, uh, and like I said, and but guys, keep in mind too, a lot of these machines, it may look like this one, but it may be by, from a different manufacturer. Uh, the basic design of these machines is very similar. I, it is fairly portable, but this is one that I would say, take it to your shop, put it in your shop, keep it there, because with the fiber machines, there are some sensitive pieces of equipment that could get damaged or broken if you're trying to transport them around. So for events and stuff, not really what you want, because it's an open air machine as well. It is not uh, safety enclosed uh, to protect the public, so it would be a bit of a pain trying to use this in public. But for the shop, for doing metals, so far guys, this one outperforms any of the other fibers I've ever had in my shop even though it is only a 30 watt, and that's kind of low on the power spectrum for Mopus. I think a 30 watt is about as low as you can go in the Mopa world, but so far guys, I'm having fun with it. It's been able to do a lot of things that the other machines can do, it just takes a little longer. So like I said, if you wanna check it out, check the description down below. I'll have a link down there and stay tuned. If you hadn't already, hit the button and subscribe and we'll have some more content coming out and uh, maybe a couple of project videos with the machine here in the near future just to kind of show you what it can do. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.